So my last video was all about the DJI Pocket 2. And in that video, I asked you guys what questions you have about this camera gimbal combo. It's kind of an all in one. So what I'm going to do in this video is go through all of your questions, try to answer everything I can about this camera and try to figure out if this is a good camera to get or not. Also to figure out if it's a good camera to upgrade from the pocket one or just stick with the pocket one. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so the first question is, have you tested the Pocket One accessories with the Pocket Two, like the ND filters and the extension rod? So most of the Pocket One accessories do work with the Pocket Two, and you can go on the DJI's website and it will actually say at the bottom whether a specific accessory is works with the two or it's just the one. Now things like the wireless module and the extension rod do work on the Pocket Two, and the ND filters do as well. So if you have third-party ND filters like Freewell or Polar Pro, they will also still work on the Pocket 2. These cameras are very similar side by side. The only difference is that the Pocket 2 is a little bit longer. So the one accessory that I saw does not work with the Pocket 2 is the waterproof housing. And that's because the Pocket 2 is a little bit longer. Next question is, hi bro. Hi, did you experience any overheating issues? So every time that I've worked with this camera and shot with it, the camera itself does get hot. Like when you hold it in your hand, it does get warm. However, I haven't had this camera overheat at all. So I did some tests. I let it run for an hour, a little bit over an hour and camera just worked fine. It just kept recording. Now the pocket two definitely gets hot. Like you can feel it on the sides and the camera itself. However, it's not so hot that you can't use it. So just something to think about when you're using it. If you're doing it for long periods of time, the camera itself, and the gimbal, the whole thing will get warm. All right, I wanna do a quick side-by-side -side to show you how the exposure is in low light. So behind me, I have my Aperture 120D. And I just wanna show you side-by-side -side, as I walk to the dark portions, like away from the light, you could see how much more exposure you're getting with the two. And that's because on the Pocket 2, you have a larger sensor. So it's gonna be better in low light. And so this is both being recorded at 4K, 30 frames per second, and the camera's at the exact same distance away from my face. I'm looking, they're both exposed the exact same. Let's put it really close. All right, there we go, walk around a bit. And it definitely looks like with the Pocket 2, you can see into the shadows better, and it's just a better overall exposure in low light. Okay, next question. Does it have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth now? It doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi built into the Pocket 2 itself. However, you have the do-it-all handle, which I have connected right now, and that gives you the wireless connectivity to your phone. And it also allows you to add like the microphone. This is the little microphone that DJI has created that is very similar to the Rode Wireless Go. However, it's built into this do-it-all handle. So if you already have the wireless module from the Pocket 1, that will work with the Pocket 2. But if you don't have that yet, the do-it-all handle basically incorporates that along with a few other features. No wireless Bluetooth built in. However, just add the little extension handle. All right, the next question is, how does this camera compare to the GoPro Hero 9? Well, a gimbal is very different than a GoPro. A GoPro is an action camera. So you can mount it to different things and get really cool perspectives. So like, you know, on your chest, if you're riding a mountain bike or on your helmet, whereas a gimbal's different. With a gimbal, you have access to things like active tracks. So you can set this down, move around, the gimbal's gonna follow you. You just don't get the same stability with a GoPro. Even though the GoPro Hero 9 has some insane stabilization, it's still not the same as using a gimbal. Now I'll link a video down in the description to another video that my buddy Dave Mays did over at Indie Mogul, and he compares the stabilization of the Pocket 2 to the GoPro Hero 9. And it really shows you the difference between using a gimbal and using a GoPro. All right, so I just checked in that exposure was super hot. So I've just adjusted my exposure down to negative 0.1. So it's still auto exposure, however, you now are seeing this at negative 0.1. What I've noticed with this camera is that it definitely reads hot, especially in this mixed lighting when you have bright sunlight. So I'm trying to find the best exposure settings with this camera and just kind of playing around with different styles of shooting to see if I can figure out the best way to you know, get good exposure on the face, but also not have everything 
overexposed. The next question is, can you use ND filters with the wide angle lens? And unfortunately you can't. So right now I have the wide angle lens on, that's without. Because these are magnets, you really only get one or the other. Now, maybe a company will come out with a version of this wide lens where you can stack ND filters, but if you had two magnets on here, it's just gonna make this even weaker. And I think that's one thing about this camera that I would like to see changed in the future is that not only use magnets, but maybe have clip-on lenses because if you hit this too hard, these lenses could pop off. You know, magnets are great for quick if you're not doing crazy action, you're just kind of walking around like this, but as soon as you have any sort of motion where you're moving the gimbal around quickly or it gets hit, there's a potential for the lens to pop off and then get lost somewhere because they are so small. Now the next question is, is the wireless attachment optional? Yes, so all the attachments are optional. You can buy just the Pocket 2 by itself and then you can buy each of the accessories by itself or you can get the creator package, which is the one that I have, which gives you everything you need to get up and running. So you get the wide lens, you get the wireless module, you get the microphone, and you get like a little tripod. And it's just basically all the accessories that you need to be able to get up and running with this and use it in a bunch of different settings. And I think it's a great package to get, especially if you're not a Pocket One owner and you don't already have accessories, definitely go for the creator pack because it's pretty much everything you need to get up and running with this camera. All right, the next question is, does ActiveTrack 3.0 work when filming in 4K60? And unfortunately, it does not. All right, so I checked all the modes, and basically there's only a few that ActiveTrack doesn't work in. So 4K60, it does not work. And if you do the eight times slow-mo, it does not work, but it does work on the four times slow-mo. <clears throat> now, a side note, with slow motion, you only have access to four times and eight times, and that is at 1080p. So the other modes that ActiveTrack doesn't work in is 4K30 in the higher quality. So there's two qualities. You can choose lower quality or higher quality. The ActiveTrack doesn't work in 4K30 in the high quality, but if you bump it down to 4K 24 frames per second or 4K 25 frames per second, it does work. Now in 1080p and 2.7K, it does work at 60 frames a second. So the limitation comes right as you hit 4K 30 with the higher quality and then 4K 60 and then the super slow slow-mo. So that's the different resolutions and frame rates where ActiveTrack does not work. All right, so the next question is, can you plug in the Rode Wireless Go to the Pocket 2? And yes, you can. So you have to do it through either the dongle that was on the original Pocket or this do-it-all handle, which I have right now. However, if you're gonna use the do-it-all handle, just use the DJI microphone because it's pretty much the exact same thing and then you don't have anything hanging off the handle itself. Now, let's just do a quick test. I wanna compare the Rode Wireless Go to the wireless mic that I have here, and I also wanna do a range test to see when they start breaking up. So on the left here, you see the DJI Wireless Transmitter, and on the right, the Rode Wireless Go. And you can see the audio levels on my timeline. Now, when I was walking in both of these samples, I was turning my back and putting my body between the transmitter and the receiver. The DJI wireless transmitter was holding a signal almost the entire time, whereas the Rode Wireless Go broke up a ton. The only times where you were getting a signal is when my body wasn't between the receiver and the transmitter. You know, I thought the Rode Wireless Go would do better, but the DJI wireless transmitter works so much better in this situation. And just for comparison, Here's the microphone on the Rode Wireless Go, and here's the one from DJI. Now, the fuzzy on top, you can put this on the Rode Wireless Go as well, but the fuzzy on top of the DJI one is much more stable. Like, this hasn't popped off yet, whereas this one on the Rode Wireless Go just comes off super easy. So, you can just see how much smaller the DJI one is. It's about half the size of the Rode Wireless Go. So, one thing that's really cool about the do-it-all handle is you just plug in the microphone and it starts working right away. It just says device connected. So any microphone, you can just plug right into the side of this with 3.5 millimeter. Next question is, did they improve the battery life? And unfortunately not. When I was comparing them side by side, it's basically the same battery. So I could imagine they're using the same battery. But basically what you're gonna get is 140 minutes on a full charge. And this is tested in a laboratory environment, shooting 1080p, 24 frames per second video and it's just to be a reference because as soon as you bump it up to 4k 60 you're going to be burning more battery 
and depending on how much you're moving the gimbal around, you're gonna be burning up more battery. So it takes 73 minutes to do a full charge. So just something to keep in mind, you're probably gonna get an hour to two hours of record time Take it for what it is. Unfortunately, there is no replaceable battery. That is one thing that I wish they would have put in this model. It's like a little battery that you can change out so that you could run. You know, because a lot of times you're not gonna be wanting to charge. Like for me, I wanna have a few spare batteries and be able to take this with me and shoot throughout the entire day. So if you're gonna be using it all day, you gotta make sure that you're turning it on and off. And you might also have to bring like a power brick so that you can charge the thing throughout the day. So. That is one downside is how the battery is set up for it. All right, so the next question is, does it shoot in 4K for motion lapse and hyperlapse? And unfortunately, no, it still is only shooting 1080p. For some reason with the time-lapse modes, it only goes up to 1080p, which is unfortunate because this is a 4K camera and I'd love to be able to do 4K time-lapses and hyperlapses. You're still stuck with 1080p in those modes. So let's just do a side-by-side -side test of the mic just on the gimbal itself. Turn this guy off. All right, we're back to just the audio out of the Pocket 2. Now let me grab the Pocket 1 and let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so here is an audio test. This is the sound coming from the Pocket 2, just straight from the camera. And here is the sound coming from the Pocket 1, straight from the camera. Also, you're just seeing a side-by-side -side of the Pocket 1 to the Pocket 2. The same lighting scenario, and you can kind of see how the camera is exposing for my face in both of these scenarios. There is no exposure compensation on this footage anymore. So this is straight out of camera in the standard profile. All right, so the next question is, still no zoom? I guess I'm sticking with the old one. Well, actually, there is a zoom on this. It's a digital zoom. and. When you're on the screen on the left side, you just click the plus and minus and you can zoom in. So see, I can zoom right into my face two times for 4K mode. Let's switch over to 1080. So in 1080, you can zoom all the way in to four times. So it definitely does have a zoom, but like I said, it's a digital zoom. It's not a zoom lens, but if you need that capability, you do have it in this. All right, so the next question is, are you able to use the joystick while the Pocket 2 is already filming during video capture? Or is it that you can only use it to set up the shot? So I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna walk out of the scene. I have the joystick on this gimbal. And while I'm filming, you can see that, yeah, you can do pans, you can tilt up and down. So it's not limited to just setting up. So I have to shoot the rest of this video on the Sony because the Pocket 2 died and I need to charge it and it's gonna get dark soon. So let's wrap this video up. Let's get through the rest of these questions. Is there any way to monitor audio with the wireless audio module? So this piece that pops off the bottom, the do it all component, there's a little 3.5 millimeter and I showed you this earlier. You can plug a microphone into this, but you could also plug in your headphones. So if you are using this wireless audio, you can plug in headphones and be able to listen to the sound as you're recording. Now, unfortunately, if you have a microphone plugged in this little port on the side, you can't also listen to it. Maybe they'll do some different do-it-all extensions in the future with one input, one output, but it really comes down to how creators use this camera. All right, next, does this thing shoot vertical portrait mode? So yes, it does do vertical mode. However, it's not gonna be you know, standing upright like this. You have to spin it sideways and shoot in this direction to do vertical. Now it's going to adjust the gimbal and be shooting for vertical video, but you know, you're holding it sideways like this. So just something to keep in mind. That's how the original Pocket did it. And that's how this one does too. So the next question is about the Pocket One actually, and this little 15 millimeter lens. Can you use it on the Pocket One? Well, all the attachments work on the Pocket Two from the Pocket One. So yes, the attachment, this wide angle adapter does work on the Pocket one. So I'll just show you. Here's my setup. And this is with the wide lens attachment. Pop this off. No attachment. Pop this back on. Your attachment's back on. This, so this attachment gives you 0.75 wider field of view. So you have to take this lens and make it a little wider. It's obviously not as wide as the 20 millimeter with this on there, but with this attachment, it does allow you to be able to get a wider shot. 
something better to film yourself with. So I guess the biggest question is, is this camera worth it? If you have the Pocket 1, is this Pocket 2 worth the upgrade? And I think it is for two reasons. One, wider field of view. I do personally like the wider field of view. And if you do need to zoom in, you can on the 4K footage. And the other reason that I think it's so powerful is this wireless do-it-all module. It's not that big and it just pops right on the bottom of the gimbal, makes it a little bit longer, but in the grand scheme of things, it's still a very pocket-sized gimbal. And with this, you get external audio, you get a wireless audio module that sounds great and has good range. And you also are able to connect to your phone through this. So once you've set it up once, you just turn on the Mimo app and boom, it's connected. And you can use this in so many different ways with having the phone separate than the camera. And for me, like behind the scenes, this is the perfect camera because I can hand this to anyone and it has a little screen and they can just point it at whatever's going on and I know I'm gonna get good stable footage. So guys, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Do you think the Pocket 2 is worth the upgrade if you have the Pocket 1? And if you don't, do you think that this is a good camera to get? But guys, I'll put links down below in the description to where you can find out more about this camera. And guys, that's it. I will see you on the next one.